Yeah, good afternoon, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, just been having a, uh, a quick little play now I'm back off this uh, short trip and just want to do a little bit of an update before moving on. Um, two things. First, uh, on the receiver, um, on the Receive AF amplifier, I had between the two stages a 47 microfarad capacitor. And what I was finding when I was transmitting or moving between, got a lightning storm outside. Um, moving between uh, transmit and receive, so that's transmit and then back to receive, um, it was taking a bit of a time for that capacitor to charge up and there was about a three quarter of a second delay where there was nothing coming out of the audio of the audio frequency amplifier uh, when it went back to receive. Um, I, I, I guess I could have put in there a 100 nanofarad capacitor um, which works perfectly fine um, but in the end I opted for a 3.3 which um, you know, my sort of assumptions are with the higher capacitance, less losses in terms of capacitive reactants. And as you can see now, so that's on receive, transmit. So that's fine. As far as I'm concerned, that's 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 fine in terms of that delay. So that was one thing, and I've updated the schematic on the um, on the blog. The other thing I changed too was a um, the output capacitor uh, on the. Uh, microphone amplifier that was also a um, a 47 microfarad capacitor um, and what I was finding that uh, on transmit so moving to transmit I was getting an ever so slight um, CW carrier coming out which would then very quickly within you know within half a second or so would collapse down to nothing um, so there's always a little bit of a DC getting through on that that was um, uh, unbalancing our mixer so I've now changed that to a, uh, a one microfarad um, capacitor um, and that problem's totally disappeared now so uh, from back from transmit to receive it's good there's, there's no CW there and uh, it's working fine. Um, the third change I made uh, and I alluded to it in the uh, the last video was an attempt to share between transmit and receive the bandpass filter and then the follow-on um, RF amplifier. Um, at the moment, if I look at EF, EMRFD, there seems to be a couple of different configurations on receive, where uh, and there's, there's a couple of examples where the RF amp is directly after the antenna. So it goes antenna, RF amplifier, then bandpass filter. Um, but a lot of the, the, the text um, and certainly in other texts as well, the more common way seems to be the antenna comes in, it goes through the pre-selector or through that bandpass filter, um, reduces this down to the, the, that frequency band you desire, and then it gets amplified. So I've kept it in that configuration. So on receive, um, it does exactly that. It goes through the, um, the antenna relay, through that bandpass filter, and then back out again. But what I've done, um, I've added um, another little relay there which allows me to, to, do, to do this actually. So at the moment, that's our existing antenna relay. And this is the additional double pole, double throw relay I've thrown in. You know, I acknowledge it's another relay, but uh, for me, this is you know, my radio and I, I don't mind too much. Um, and what that allows me to do now, on receive, the antenna RF comes in, across that link, through the bandpass filter, amplifier to that second bandpass filter, through this stage, links across and then into our into our first mixer. On transmit, all these switches go to the other side. Um, out of that last mixer is now our our frequency that's being it's now up to our desired transmit frequency um, in the 40 meter band, and it's now coming down here, going through this set of contacts, comes up this way through the bandpass filter, through the amplifier, down here, comes across this this contacts will go through which will be the next part of the of this radio build which will be the power amplifier and its adjacent or its, its subsequent um, will follow on low pass filter and up through that existing contact here and out the antenna um, and that works perfectly fine as expected um, got heaps of headroom uh, on that amplifier so the RF I'm getting out of that mixer uh, on transmit um, is certainly not um, overdriving that in any way shape or form so um, uh, so with a you know yes a, a, a little bit of added complexity in regards to the switching 
you know, I get another free DP or 10 DB of, of, of free gain because it's sitting there. Um, so why not why not use it for transmit as a, a pseudo uh, RF preamplifier? So that's the um, the only two changes that have been made to the radio, or three changes, like I say, that coupling capacitor on the uh, AF amp, that um, output capacitor on the microphone amplifier, and then the addition of that relay there to allow um, this combination here to be shared between transmit and receive. Um, uh, what I do need to do, and I think it'll be a, a project coming up, is to build a two-tone generator. Um, let me make sure I'm on dummy load. So it will just allow me then to, unfortunately you can't see with the refresh rate of the uh, the camera, but um, yeah, uh, it seems to be pretty well soon. Uh, quite happy with that. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to cover off on. So like I say, a two-tone generator would be quite nice to build um, as a follow-on project. Um, I do have the ability to do that out of the speakers of the uh, the cell phone through a little app, but of course we then potentially run into problems where um, the amplitude's not exactly the same between the two uh, the two frequencies. Anyway, like I say, this is just going to be a very short um, video to provide an update, and then next steps will be to work on uh, filling this gap here uh, with the power amplifier. Um, interesting, the two LD MOS devices turned up. Um, these are supposed to be 10 watt um, devices, uh, if I can just get them out of the plastic. And I don't know if you can see that, but um, they are absolutely minuscule. So they are, gosh, it's probably a bit hard, hard to see there, but you can sort of just see one, two. So those, like I say, these are, um, what did I say, they were, they were LD MOSs, the BLF1043, and according to the spec sheet, um, they're 10 watt devices. So um, I have to do a little bit of learning to work out how I'm going to uh, make these work. Um, might make a little test circuit and then uh, try and work out how the, uh, the heat sink works and um, give them a go. It didn't cost that much, so if the uh, magic smoke gets let out, then I'm, I'm not too concerned, but um, I could play around with, haven't played around with those before. Right, I'll say 73 is there, um, and uh, hopefully this week we'll get a chance to start working on the parent fire. Cheers all.